Hello and welcome to the section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. We're going to continue working with mesh currents and dependent sources in the circuit where we're dealing with the mesh current method. And so we're going to get practiced by working this problem here. Fairly simple looking problem, but the devil's in the details a little bit. What we have is a 15 volt constant source, a 10 volt constant source, resistor network, and then up here, instead of a voltage source that's dependent on something else, this is a dependent current source. So this is different than what we've done before. It's not a voltage source, it's a current source. The value of the current coming out of here is 1.2 times V delta. V delta is defined as the voltage in this direction across the 25 ohm resistor. So once we turn it on, whatever the voltage is here, that number times 1.2 is gonna dictate what the current is flowing in the top of that circuit up there. And to cap it off, what we're asked to do is find out what percentage of the total power developed in this circuit is delivered to the 25 ohm resistor. So on top of that, I haven't written it down, we're also going to verify that the power produced by the sources is equal to the power absorbed by everything else. So there's, there's two parts to this. What we're going to do is define our meshes. In this case, we have three meshes again. We'll define our mesh current equations. Of course, we're not gonna be able to solve them straight out of the gate because we have an extra variable here. You should kind of be used to that by now. We'll figure out the constraint equations and, and finally beat the system into shape for a mesh current solution. Then we'll find the mesh currents. Once we have the mesh currents everywhere, it should be enough information to find out the power absorbed by all of these resistances. And it should be enough to calculate the power delivered to the circuit by all of these other things. And once we actually look at it, we should always find that the power delivered from the sources should be equal to the power absorbed by everything else. And we're gonna verify that, and then we're going to calculate what percentage of the power is delivered to this resistor as compared to everything else. So we'll get to all those details when we get there, but first, what we need to do is define our meshes. So if we call this mesh A, this will be I sub A. And if we call this mesh B, it'll be I sub B. And we'll call this mesh sub C, which is I sub C. So no uh, big surprises. Let's go and deal with mesh A first. So let's, well, we'll just use the blue here. We'll do mesh A like this. It'll be a standard application of, of what we've been doing so far. So we're going through the source from negative to positive. So we're gonna treat that as negative 15 volts. And then when we get up through the two ohm resistor, we assume the current's going this way, so it'll be IA minus IB. So it'd be IA minus IB. We we'll of course carry that as a positive because of the implied voltage drop if we assume the current's going that way. So we have I times R, it's the voltage drop there. And then we'll get to the 25 ohm resistor and we assume the current's going down. That'll let us carry it as a positive voltage drop there. We're ignoring V delta here. This is just a label that ties into this. That has nothing to do with when you're writing your mesh equations. If we assume the current's going down, it's gotta be IA minus IC. So we'll call it IA minus IC times 25. That's the voltage drop right there. And then finally, we're gonna make our way down to the three ohm resistor. The current IA is the only current flowing through in this direction. There's an implied voltage drop there. So it'll be IA times three and that's equal to zero. So now let's go ahead and simplify this equation. We're gonna carry the negative 15. Here we're gonna multiply two times IA minus two times IB. And then we'll multiply this through and we'll have 25 